Life Coach. By the way, we will take your emails if you want to email us. That's at lifecoach at kzok.com. Or you can just call right now, uh, and that's uh, 1-800-252-1025. Life Coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. Let's talk to Laura in Tacoma. Good morning, Laura. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you? I I'm good, thank you. What can I do for you this morning? Okay, so I was at call you about one subject, but I changed my mind. Um, I am living with alcoholic. Yeah, uh, so is my wife. <laughs> That's why I called you. That's why I called you. That's why I'm the life coach, man. What can I do for you? So, um, I don't drink a lot. Um, I'll have a glass of wine every now and then. The other night, he got very drunk and um, extremely belligerent and um, began to tell me that I was the best pool of his life. Right. Which, which pissed me off. So I, what I, I could did, imagine that would. <laughs> so what I did is while he was going on and on, coming in and out of the bedroom, tell him, and I'm telling him, please leave me alone, please leave me alone, repeating myself like a broken record. The, he left one time, so I called his friend's phone and set it on the bed where he didn't see it. That's great. I think I, I've had that done to me, and I've done it to a girl so I could prove she was lying about something. Oh. It's a thing people do. Very smart, Laura. So you did this so this guy, his buddy, could find out what's really going on because he says it's not that bad. Laura, my girlfriend, or whoever this person is to me, is just hassling me. She's a nut job. So you called the friend so he'd continue to come in and yell and scream about being drunk crap. Was, is that right? This was all recorded. Right. So that this person that got really drunk could hear himself drunk and going on and on so then yesterday morning doesn't remember a thing right but you've got the what, recording yes what's wrong why are you upset what's going on today oh nothing nothing what's wrong finally i said you said enough yesterday so today or tomorrow he's gonna get a call from his friend right and i want his friend to play it back to him right i feel bad for doing it in a way but at the same time I knew I needed to do it. Oh, you're, you so, know what? You have to do it. And that guy's his own worst enemy, man. That guy, he's got other problems than the fact that he's just belligerent. And I know that you know this guy and probably love this guy, but he's, what is he, 10 good drunks away from laying hands on you? You got to stop this guy, if not for your good, if not for the relationship, for his own good. He's going to do something incredibly stupid. He's going to get behind the wheel, and whether it's just get a ticket or hurt somebody, that's going to happen. He's going to start coming into your bed, and you're going to say, hey, get out of here, you're belligerent, and then he's going to grab your shoulder to prove a point, and it's going to leave a bruise on you, and somebody's going to call. You got to get this guy in check right now, and the faster the better, because the big mistakes are coming. If you're already trying to kick him out of your room, and he already can't remember his actions, big mistakes are coming that are going to last a long time. And I think you've done the very right thing with this guy. And I think it was Amy that misses the the chance that she never got to record me because there are things, and I don't ever say that never happened. I did in the beginning, now I believe her. But there are things going on that I can't get a call on at all. I don't remember. They're gone. They, they didn't happen in my memory. And they're so awful that I'm really glad I don't remember. They're just bad. I did really bad things, man. And uh, I don't I don't want to remember them, but I, I I believe my wife when she says, you can't drink anymore because this is what you do. I believe her. So, Laura, uh, if you're asking me, did you do the right thing? The answer is yes. So you did the right thing. And hopefully you'll get this guy off booze. And if you have a problem in the future, please call me back. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate the call. If you've got a question for the life coach, today would be a great day to call 800-252-1025. Well, every day is a great every day. Every day is a call, good day to call the life coach. Seems like there's always problems on Mondays. Like something goes wrong over the weekend. So uh, you don't have to be embarrassed and uh, you can change your name if you need to. 800 252 1025. Get yourself some help by calling the life coach or email lifecoach at kzok.com. Ellen in North Bend writes I have a 19 year old son that always seems to be used by his friends. Whenever they need money or a ride, he is the first one they call. He needs to learn to stand up for himself. I've discussed this with him and he agrees, but the next time someone calls, he goes running to save them. Any suggestions? Yeah, I do. The, um, there are, uh, you know, there are a million books I, I can uh, recommend. I'm not sure I have the correct title offhand. I don't want to give you the wrong book. You can, you can find everything online these days. And there are books from people that, you know, that... Uh, they were the guy that people would call when they needed a ride, when they needed some money, when they needed a place to stay. Uh, I would suggest th that you get one or two of those books and read them. And here's what will happen. And this happened with me and other problems that you'll go, oh, my God, that's me. 
I don't I don't want to be so textbook that I'm actually a textbook. So show this kid that it does happen to others and that he does have to get it together or that's going to go on forever. It's not just going to be other teenagers need money, drugs, ride, whatever it is. That's going to lead into his marriage, his job, and the rest of his future. He has to grow the personality and the respect for himself that he wants in the future. He has to get that now. And like I said, I'd start that with books. And then if you're not getting what you want, look for people to be role models in that regard and go that way. Show people that, you know, don't get taken advantage advantage of people that, you know, maybe started life a one way and worked it out to be another way. Me, for example. And see if you can't get some good stories told to this young man about how he should stand up for himself and he's not losing friends. He's, you know, saving time with this kind of crap in his future. Thank you for the email. I appreciate it. Phone number if you'd like to call me, 1-800-252-1025. No problem too big. No problem too small. Uh, you know, here's what I said uh, before. Husband, wife, kids, jobs, substances, and then anything else you can think of. I've probably been there twice. 1-800-252-1025. Give me a call. You can also email lifecoach at kzok.com. Spencer and Lakewood emailed. Great name, Spencer. I'm the youngest manager of my company. The problem I'm having is that my in my department, some of the older employees don't take me seriously because of my age. I am 25 and they're in the great, uh, group of 35 to 55. How do you earn respect from people who think they know everything better than you do? All right, uh, I'm going to say this in the quickest way possible. This is not accurate. This, uh, and I'll, give, I'll, I'll, tr I'll start to correct myself the second it happens. They're not hassling you because you're young. They're hassling themselves because they're old. Now, of course, a 35-year-old is not old to anybody, let alone to me. But here's the thing. What you are is you're kind of a, a, an indicator of their lives. Why are they doing at 35 what you're doing at 25? That means they moved a little slow. They should have the job that their bosses have. And you're, you're a reminder of that every day. Uh, you know, they're taking you seriously. They may be hassling you, but they're taking you very seriously. They admire you. Maybe it bugs them that you're already where you are. But when you get their age, you're going to be everybody's boss. And they know that. So I would do what they're doing and quietly be proud of yourself. Because that's what they are. They're just scared and it bothers them that they... They didn't do better when they had a chance. It bothers them that they're doing the job that you're doing at 35, that you're doing at 25. And I said this before, but they're thinking, what's that kid going to be doing by the time he's my age? And the answer is everybody's boss's job. So they're not really get, not taking you seriously. They admire you greatly and don't know how to say so. So listen to more carefully and see if that's not what you're getting. Is people that went, oh man, he sh I should do. A, I should have done a little more with my life when I had the chance because this guy did. So good, good luck with that. But they really do see secretly admire you. 800-252-1025. You should be calling that number right now if you've got a question for Danny Bonaducci, life coach. Any kind of problem you have, he can help. Just pick up the phone and make that call. Uh, email lifecoach at KZOK. Lyndon Edmonds emailed, I have a ton of credit card bills that my husband isn't aware of. I've always done the bills and made sure they're paid on time. The problem is I've been paying the minimum amount on each. Oh, you can't do that. Susie Orman would set you on fire. Gets worse. Oh, baby. Four cards with a balance of $50,000. Oh, oh, my God. Declare bankruptcy. I'm so well, I'm ashamed. I'm not sure that's my advice yet. Hang on. I'm so ashamed that I let things get out of hand. I've been doing, I'm the one who's been doing most of the spending, so it's my burden. Do you have any suggestions on how to handle this? And do you think it's time for me to tell my husband or should I just take care of it myself? No, you got to tell your husband. You absolutely have to tell your husband. And I'd say, matter of fact, I may even say it quicker. You have to tell your wife if you were a guy. This needs to be addressed by your family. Here's off the off the cuff. Uh, I would say take a loan. There's a, there's a name for this kind of loan. Anybody know it off the top of your head? Consolidation. Yes, thank you very much. I knew you'd know. Get a consolidation loan because I can't believe you. What is it? Two hundred thousand dollars in debt 50, on credit cards. Fifty thousand. I thought that. Oh, on each. I thought it was on uh, on all of them individually. All right, fifty thousand dollars in debt. They're charging you somewhere between thirteen and nineteen percent. You absolutely have to pay this off. When I shouted out, declare bankruptcy. I wasn't kidding. I'm kidding for now. There's a chance that might be the best way to go. But the first thing you do is you tell your husband you work together. When he's done shouting, who knows? knows what he will do. You know, he might shout and that's probably what you're afraid of. But eventually the shouting's got to stop and fairly quickly because somebody needs to address that. And seriously, I think a consolidation loan is is the way to go on this. You get one big loan to pay all of that off and you get a consolidation loan at uh, 6%, which beats the bejesus out of 18%. But address it right away. Address it today. It's just going to get ahead of you. Thanks for the email. I appreciate it. 800-252-1025. That's the number for Danny Bonaducci Life Coach. And Shannon and Fife, you're on with Danny. Hello, Shannon. Hi, hi, Danny. Um, I have a boyfriend that uh, doesn't want my kids coming around on the weekends, and I have two boys, 
and um, that's when I get to see him. So what do I do about that? All right, let me ask you something. Um, is he right, or are they decent kids that, that don't make a lot of noise and don't break stuff when they come over? Are they good kids when they come over? Yeah, they're good. Okay, yep. uh, this is a fast answer, Shannon, but he's got to go. I mean, you gotta maybe you could have a, a conversation with him, but when the conversation's over, I think there's going to be some collateral damage if he didn't like your kids. So I would say, because the kids are staying. At the end of the day, at the end of the equation, we can talk as much as we want, decide what's happening, what we should do, but the kids are staying. So how animate is he about your kids shouldn't come over when we're together? Oh, he gets really moody, and he'll just lock himself in his room, and he won't come out. Is that because, and uh, no offense here, is that because he's not getting the sex he wants when he wants when there's kids around? <laughs> Uh, good question, but no, that's not the problem. Okay, yeah, I think I think this guy's got to go. I, you know, I, I understand uh, that when you're a single mom, the right well, anytime the right man is hard to find, so is the right woman. But I'm, you know, maybe you're thinking this guy is harder to replace than he is. There's nothing that special about this guy, and I'll tell you why. Because he's telling to his girl's face, "I don't like your kids." He needs to go. He's easily replaced. You shouldn't look back. But this guy, if your question is, what do I do about my boyfriend not liking my kids? The answer is replace your boyfriend. It's just that easy. You know, this is. A lot of times when I give advice, there's several things that you could do to make it right. In this case, there's only one thing, and that's ask this guy to go. And you know, I don't want to fight with him, but here's the thing, Shannon. He doesn't like your kids. What else do you need to hear from this guy? He doesn't like your kids. He absolutely has to go. You'll find another guy in the proverbial hour and a half because he wasn't difficult to replace, and you'll feel better about yourself. Hey, thank you very much for the call. That's uh, uh, Shannon. That's all the time we have for Danny Bonducci and Life Coach today. Uh, Life Coach is brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. 